Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com forward slash rive to receive the top 10 stocks to buy right now. The market does not like telecom stocks like Verizon and AT&T, but both of these companies are looking really attractive from an investment perspective, trading below a 10 price to earnings multiple and having a dividend yield over 7%. Is the market crazy or am I crazy for liking these stocks? I'm going to tell you why the market is worried and why I'm still bullish on these stocks long term. Before we get there, I want to ask your thoughts below in the comments section. Give this video a like and, of course, subscribe to The Rive Project for more coverage on companies like this. Now, Verizon and AT&T are both trading for very low earnings multiples in part because they have a ton of debt on the balance sheet. And that's something that investors are very concerned about right now. You can see from this chart here that both companies have over $100 billion in debt. That's primarily taken out from building out the networks that they have right now, including the 5G networks where they had to spend tens of billions of dollars last year to buy Spectrum. Now, with interest rates on the rise, it's likely that as they have to refinance this debt in the future, they're going to have to pay higher interest rates to do that. That could hurt the bottom line. And that's something that investors are really worried about, especially in a very competitive market like telecommunications. So without question, there are risks for these stock. But why do I see a bright future? Well, there are a couple of factors that I think the market is missing. One of them is 5G home internet. Now, I've been using 5G home internet from Verizon for about nine months now, and there's no way that I'm going back. It's faster than cable. It's cheaper than cable if you, if you bundle it with a smartphone. And I think there are opportunities to add bundles as well. That's really the second piece here is, is the bundling factor and this brings in streaming companies who have struggled with churn or people canceling subscriptions for their streaming services. One of the advantages of cable is that cable companies could bundle together a bunch of media options. You may not use all of them, but you're not going to churn out or cancel your subscription on a month to month basis for any given cable bundle because there's probably something in there that you want to watch. Now, streaming is a little bit different. People may be canceling Netflix one month and Paramount Plus the next that's really bad for the streaming business because it's very expensive to attract users. So they really want to reduce that churn. One way to do that is through bundling. Now, where's the natural point of bundling? Well, it's probably not a streaming service. It's probably an ancillary service like smartphones. Smartphones, I think, are the core product here. They need to have a fast connection, likely a 5G connection at this point, add in that home internet, and then add in a bundle of streaming services that could be an interesting modern triple play. The cable triple play is obviously gone at this point as people are canceling their cable subscriptions, but they're not canceling their smartphone connections. So it makes sense for this bundle to move over here to companies like Verizon and AT&T. That's something that I have done. And I think it's a compelling opportunity for companies like Verizon and AT&T to both grow revenue and have some incremental margin with that as well. Now, are there headwinds for Verizon and AT&T when it comes to competitor pressures from a lower cost provider like T-Mobile? Yes, absolutely there is, but that's always the case. And there, this is really an oligopoly business. There are only three major providers in the US. And if you can get two of them for a price to earnings ratio under 10, a dividend yield over seven, that's a great valuation, great dividends. And I think the market is missing that there are long-term growth opportunities to add more connections from things like home internet, and also bundling streaming services that may actually be looking for partners to create bundles right now. I like the high dividend yield in this current market environment, but don't sleep on these companies as potential growth opportunities as 5G proliferates across the country. I think there's going to be more and more use cases in innovation for, with 5G at the core. I'm a buyer here. I understand why the market is concerned and debt is definitely something that management is going to have to figure out how to reduce long-term. We're also not going to be having tens of billions of dollars spent on Spectrum in the next couple of years. So there's an opportunity to cash flow a little bit better than we did over the last year or two, pay down some of that debt and reduce risk for investors. What do you think? Put your comments in the comment section below. Again, give this video a like, and of course, subscribe to The Rive Project. I appreciate it, and I will see you here next time.